if you feel like you're going to hit it a little bit thin, it's almost allowing that club to be working on the way up already. And as, as I said, if you miss hit it thin a little bit, you're going to be front edge of the grain and you're still going to get away with your par. All right, mate, so we're standing here, par four, we've got about 140 left, bit of an elevated shot. The pin's at the back of the green and we can't see from here, right? Yeah. Uh, ball's line, pretty good, fairway bunker shot. Now, typically a shot that a lot of players do find challenging, mainly because of the contact element, right? We often see that a lot of players will tend to introduce certain aspects into their setup, thinking that it's going to encourage a bit of strike on the ball. And with an amateur golfer, we see that they, they generally place the ball quite far back in their stance and they try and hit down on it a lot, Yeah. right? So from your perspective, and when you do play in pro-ams and that sort of thing, and you're, you're looking at your buddies or your friends and they're playing golf and they've got a fairway bunker shot, what sort of advice would you give them just to encourage a bit better strike? Because this is a challenging shot no matter what level you play at, right? Yeah. Even as a pro, multiple times in tournaments, like I've gotten up to this position, and especially with something with a loft, like an 8-iron like we've got here, you start to look at that and you go, well, that's a little bit of a panic moment, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you get it slightly behind and all you know, before you know it, the, the ball's only advancing a, a few meters out there. So why don't you run us through exactly the way that you would approach this shot exactly? Yeah. And then we'll kind of talk about how that would maybe differ from the amateur golfer. Yeah, okay. So um, I think, as you said, we've got uh, an elevated green. We're kind of hitting off a bit of an upslope here as well. So I think you're probably going to have a bit of a tendency to fall back on it yeah. um, and, and strike the sand first, as you said. Um, so that that's something that you've got to be aware of when you walk in, whether or not you might want to apply a bit more weight on, onto the lead side yeah. um, to make sure you're staying down and, and through the shot. Okay. Um, and then for me personally in fairway bunkers, I've always played them um, I try to kind of strike a little bit uh, higher than where I would for a normal goal shot. Yeah. And I almost feel like if I'm going to miss hit it, I want it to be a bit of a knife. Yeah. Because um, it's going to it's going to be weaker anyway, so it's going to spin up a bit. And it's going to go a bit shorter. Um, that's probably the way I would approach it. And then yeah, get my my back foot really kind of on a bit of an angle, mm -hmm. um, which is propelling me forward. Okay. Great. Um, just to make sure I don't kind of fall back with that slope. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a really interesting point that you make there about the back foot. So are you using, using that almost as a bit of a wedge to ensure that you're staying onto that front side? Yeah, well, I think uh, with my foot turned in, I can, I can still rotate my weight, um, you know, like quite viciously and I'm not going to drift off. I'm not going to drift backwards. So yeah. I kind of load up still as I would and then I feel almost like when you're jumping into a swimming pool, you're kind of driving off that back foot. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, get, get right through the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like you were alluding to before, the worst shot that you could possibly hit in a fairway bunker is hitting it slightly behind, mainly because it's going to take all the momentum off. Yeah. And a shot like this, hitting it slightly thin is really not the end of the world. And like, we're lucky here because we don't have a lip, which is extremely high, like you would maybe on some other bunkers. Yeah. So, when you've got the mentality of slightly thinning the golf ball, and a lot of players would be scared of that because they don't want to top it, but at the end of the day, there's quite a big difference between where the very bottom of the ball is and then the equator. So you've actually got more room for error by doing this rather than trying to really beat down on the ball. And that's probably the biggest error that I see with amateur golfers is they try and hit down on it so much, assuming that if I at least get that ball first contact, we're going to get away with it, right? Yep. But what happens is the club comes in on such a steep angle that you're de-lofting this club into pretty much nothing. It's actually a lot harder to get that right amount of ball that you've got to hit. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think your strike point actually becomes less with your hands forward because you know you've got no loft. The angle you're coming down on is so severe that the difference between hitting the equator of the ball and you know the sand an inch behind the ball is not much. Whereas if you feel like you're going to hit it a little bit thin, it's almost allowing that club to be working on the way up already. And as, as I said, if you miss hit it thin a little bit, you're going to be front edge of the grain and you're still going to get away with your par. Yeah, okay. So final thing here is just ball position, right? So where would you place your ball position relative to a stock 8-iron? And then what are you doing here in, in this bunker shot? So a little bit of an upslope. We want to get that ball first contact, not yep. too much of a steep delivery. Talk us through that. Yeah, um, I think for... For ball position, I'm probably kind of looking where the pin is mm -hmm. um, and, and what shot I want to hit. So obviously this pin looks like it's in the back right. Um, so I want to be starting at left of the flag. Yep. Um, so it's going to be a more forward ball position than a standard ball position. But mm -hmm. um, bunker wise, I'm actually not changing my position at all from, okay. from the fairway. Great. Um, as I said, my goal is still to strike the ball first and strike the ball well. Mm. Um, so I don't want to change too much other than the, 
the thought of maybe catching it a little bit thinner than normally. Yeah, yeah. okay, great. So uh, what Hayden's kind of describing here is that when a skillful professional golfer walks into a position like this, they're not really obsessing too much about exactly where to place the ball and place their position. A lot of it's still based on feel and the way they'll go approach that. And a lot of that happens intuitively, right? Yeah. And so for you, you're feeling like you're staying tall or you're trying to thin it on purpose. And a lot of actual movements start to happen within your setup and your swing to encourage that. Right? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Effectively, the objective here is to ensure that the golf club's not moving too much down into the sand like it would for a green side bunker shot. You're trying to raise the bottom of the arc up just so you can just guarantee that you're going to get that ball first contact on a bit more of a shallower delivery. Yep, as such. absolutely. Okay, great. So let's put it all together. All right, so just yeah, stepping in, it's probably, as I said, a, a touch forward of centre um, just because of the upslope here. Mm -hmm. Really wedging that back foot in and then just feel like I catch just below the centre of the ball. Start just left of it and there you go. It's about as flush as it could get. <laughs> I swear. Thanks, mate. <laughs>